Hello everyone, Jenny Carr here. I'm really excited to be with you today. Um, I am the author of Piece of Cake, The Secret to an Anti-Inflammatory Diet. I'm an anti-inflammatory health coach. I am a mom and I love to travel. So today we're here to talk about why we fall off the anti-inflammatory eating wagon so easily when we travel and what to do about it. How can we maintain anti-inflammatory eating while we're on the road um, while still enjoying ourselves and feeling good, right? That's the goal. We want to feel good on vacation. Um, otherwise, it's hard to enjoy ourselves. So there's two, to, to begin this first part of a three-part video series, today I want to start by talking about kind of the two different types of people who typically pick up anti-inflammatory eating. So sometimes it's because you just want to improve your energy a little bit, feel more vibrant, up your athletic game. Maybe you um, are just really conscientious about diet, nutrition, and prevention. And so you're looking to prevent any sort of ailments, conditions, disease in the body that could potentially take hold in the future. Um, and so you walk your talk by following anti-inflammatory eating. If that's you, that is so awesome. Huge props to you. Most people fall into the category that I am, which is they don't necessarily start following an anti-inflammatory diet until they feel so bad they've hit rock bottom and they are looking to feel better. And they come to learn that food really is medicine, like Hippocrates says, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And food truly, as you probably already know, has the ability to heal us. And it also has the ability to destroy so much of our physical and quite frankly, our emotional and mental well-being. So if you fall into category number one, where you are just doing this for preventative reasons, to be proactive, to have a little extra energy up your um, athletic game, typically you feel really great on a day-to-day -day basis then you have something to think about, and that is whether or not you want to maintain anti-inflammatory eating while you're on the road. Um, some people just want to not worry about it, indulge in whatever comes their way, um, and not have that on their mind. And if you're someone who it doesn't affect tremendously your physical and emotional well-being, um, and that's what you want to do, then the biggest, most important component and piece is not to judge yourself be totally okay with it, right? A mentor of mine once um, called this type of thinking or eating joy eats, right? So you're, you're having a joy eat and as long as you're truly enjoying it and like taking in all the deliciousness and the ambiance and environment, every bit of the enjoyment wherever you are eating, then that's awesome. The part where you will find um, that really causes more harm um, is if you start judging yourself and you say, oh, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. Oh, I've gained weight and now like I'm forever a failure, can never hop back on, whatever it may be, the stories you tell yourself, that's the part you want to make sure you catch yourself, no judgment, relax, enjoy, and that's awesome. Now, this video series, you can certainly apply not only to traveling, but if you find yourself um, just not as prepared for the day as you'd like to. There's going to be lots of tips and tricks, food swaps, how to grocery, go to the grocery store, go out to eat, that even if you fall into category number one of doing anti-inflammatory eating for more preventative, this still, this video series will give you lots of great information. And then there's category number two, people like me who have maybe a chronic health condition who have an autoimmune condition, um, something where symptoms are affecting people more or less on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis and preventing them from really living the life they want to live, right? Having the freedom in the life that they want. Um, I've worked with grandparents who the pain in their joints is so severe and they just want to be able to play with their grandkids. And that could be you, or it could be that you know where every bathroom in your town is because when you eat foods, you need to use it right away, right? Um, or maybe you can't even work because of that. Um, I know for me, when I had my, I still am working through the parasite. Um, I'm almost so close, but the severe parasite infection that I had and the Lyme, which um, knock on wood, doctors are saying is now gone. 
but both of those were so debilitating um, for a number of years in the past that if I didn't really walk my talk with everything, anti-inflammatory eating, anti-inflammatory living, breathing water, drinking enough water, um, everything I knew, right? I would be in bed for weeks at a time, often unconscious or mostly unconscious, unable to speak. Um, my legs would get paralyzed. Like it was awful. I, I didn't know if I was going to make it through some of those dark times. Um, in which case, anti-inflammatory eating for me is something I walk my talk, right? It is a part of being able to live, being able to serve you, being able to serve my family, my friends, and myself. So if that is you, we're going to talk about, again, how you can travel and enjoy yourself and not fall off the wagon. So there's a few things that make us often, more commonly than not, fall off the wagon. And those are things like travel habits, just habits and stories we tell ourselves. So I will give you an example. Um, for many years, most of my life, I would say, I, whenever we traveled, it was tradition that we would go find a TCBY yogurt shop and I would get a TCBY ice cream yogurt cone. Um, don't know why or when this started, but just kind of killing time at the airport. It was fun. It made time go by. We don't have a TCPY where I live, and for some reason, I really liked it. <laughs> so, so this became a habit. And what I noticed when I adopted anti-inflammatory eating is that it actually was kind of hard to stop that habit. Like I would go to the airport and start walking to TCBY and be like, oh, oh yeah, Ooh, can't have that. That will not make my body feel well. Um, so we're going to talk about some food swaps. It's really important to have alter, uh, alternates, right? Food swap options that you can have that also satisfy you so you're not feeling deprived. The reason being is that deprivation, we can usually kind of like muscle our way through it for a couple of weeks, but almost always if we feel deprived, we fall, we fall to it and um, often end up falling off the wagon. And then the, the worst part is the story we tell ourselves that we'll never be able to eat anti-inflammatory, to feel better, to take care of ourselves. And we tell ourselves that story enough times that we believe it and our actions follow. So travel habits can sometimes, and just traditions can, can make us fall off the wagon. Um, for sure, lack of convenience when you're traveling, right? How often do you stop if you're on the road, stop at convenience stores to grab a snack or killing time or just not having any food with you. So you go to, you know, the newsstand store at the airports and buy some m and peanuts or something. Um, and if you do pack your food, sometimes it can be challenging <laughs> simply having enough room, especially if you're flying to have enough room for your food. Um, and then often when we go out to eat, or when we go on vacation, we go out to eat. So how do you manage that? How do you go out to eat in a way that allows you to still enjoy the company and the experience while eating foods that do not cause inflammation and harm? So I'm going to give you that trick today. Um, it took me years and years to figure out the one question to ask that makes all the difference in the world when you go out to eat, and it, it's quite fun. Um, okay. So I want to tell you that I'm an avid traveler. I've traveled all over the world. I've traveled to six of the seven continents. Um, and I've been places adventure traveling, fishing in the Amazon, um, safari in Africa, backpacking through Southeast Asia, um, all through Europe. I've done it all. I've done all kinds of different things. And so I've, and part of that was, prior to my anti-inflammatory eating <laughs> lifestyle. And part of it was definitely while I was walking my talk. Um, in fact, I went to India. I've been to India twice and I have packed all of my food for a two and a half week period of time, 100% of my food, simply because I did, um, I was battling the parasite infection and I knew exactly um, that I wasn't willing to risk eating anything over there, even though it probably where I was staying would have been fine, but I was not willing to take that chance. Um, so I have learned how to pack for two and a half weeks. I've learned how to pack for a weekend trip, going to the red carpet launch for this book. Um, 
and we're going to talk about tips to help you succeed no matter what situation you're in. Oh, and also backpacking, or I've helped clients um, pack for trips on road, uh, bike camping trips for like a week at a time. So it's all doable, just different tactics to apply. I'm looking over here because my notes are right in front of me and I don't want to forget anything. Um, okay, so if you read my book, you already know this, but in case if you skipped the book and went straight to this video, let's talk about the top six inflammatory foods and my secret trick to avoiding them. So the top six inflammatory foods that you want to stay away from are processed sugar, processed wheat, cow dairy, inflammatory oils, genetically modified foods, and alcohol. Of course, there are other inflammatory foods, things like pesticides, um, additives, and for some of you, depending on how your body is responding or the condition, the health condition it's in, you may or may not tolerate things like grains or soy. Um, so there's a number of different things that can inflame us. The problem is a lot of people will come to me and say like, Jenny, I, am, I have allergies to nightshades, which may totally be true, or I'm gluten-free, and I still can't figure out why I'm not feeling well, even though I've taken the nightshades out and I eat gluten-free. And the problem is because they're eating a lot of the other top inflammatory foods, in particular processed sugar. We have this whole like dairy-free thing. Clean eating is usually gluten-free, dairy-free. Oftentimes that's how it's referred to or, you know, not processed. Um, yet somehow sugar ends up in all of that. And processed sugar in particular, which there's over 56 names for, is the number one most inflammatory food along with alcohol. So we skip over that one, partly I think because it tastes good and we don't want to have to take it out, and partly because it's, it's literally embedded in almost every packaged food product you can find. So it is challenging sometimes to avoid processed sugar, but totally doable. And so the secret, you guys, to eating an anti-inflammatory diet that is streamlined, that makes this so much less overwhelming, is to simply focus on processed sugar. If you take out processed sugar and you're really renegade researcher, we're not looking at the nutritional label in terms of grams of sugar, but the ingredients, and we take the processed sugar out, by default, most of the cow dairy, the inflammatory oils, the GMOs, the processed wheat, and for sure the alcohol, because that in, is in essence processed sugar, those fall to the wayside. So if we just focus on processed sugar, so many of those other top inflammatory foods fall to the wayside and you get your best bang for your buck, which is what I'm all about. Okay, now it is time to teach you the last two important components I want to share with you today in this part one um, video series. There will be three videos and today was an introduction as well as talking about what is the trick if you're going out to eat and what if you're caught somewhere where um, there's no restaurants that you can eat at and you want to go to the grocery store and figure out like how can you really simply really quickly create a meal while you're on the road or on the go traveling that requires essentially no cooking and no prep that will allow your body to feel good. So um, if you haven't read my book already, I highly recommend picking up a copy. You can get a free copy. Just shoot me an email, jenny at jennycarhealth.com. Um, if you don't have a free copy, or you can go to amazon.com and buy it. But in that book, I talk about the difference between clean protein and regular protein, and that really they deserve to be two different food categories. So... I talk about the importance of eating clean protein every two to three hours and not necessarily meat protein, although for sure that's one of them. You can do grass-fed, grass-finished, or free-range um, pro meat protein is what makes the difference and brings it into the clean protein category. There's things like pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds that have a quarter cup of those has around 10 to 12 grams of protein, a clean protein powder, hard-boiled eggs that are free-range rather than cage-free. Um, beans, right? There's a lot, of, a lot of protein in beans. So there's a lot of different ways you can get clean protein. But what I do when I go to a restaurant is I ask for, I ask one question. 
what protein do you have that can be cooked without an oil and does not have marinade? And I used to go out to eat and really enjoy going out to eat for a specific meal. Like I wanted to go to this one restaurant for a specific meal. It just, oh, it sounded so good. And my husband and I had this great, like, that was our culture. That's what we enjoy doing together. When I started following an anti-inflammatory diet, I very quickly found how sick I became after going out to eat. There's so many hidden inflammatory foods in restaurants, um, starting with the oil. So canola oil is the most common oil that restaurants use, and restaurant-grade olive oil is legally half olive oil, half canola oil. Um, so it's, it's very inflammatory. And then marinades almost always have canola oil, sugar, and wheat in them. So that's why I asked this question, what protein can I have without any oil and that's not been marinated? I then tell them I have allergies to canola oil. They'll often ask what all my food allergies are and I say, it's just easier to do it this way. <laughs> ask this one question rather than tell you what all my allergies are. And, um, and I will tell them I have allergies to canola oil and ask if they have extra virgin olive oil, not to be confused with restaurant grade olive oil. So it's like a grab bag. It's kind of fun. When I was a kid, I used to go to the store and you'd pay a dollar for a grab bag and you'd open it up and have a surprise. That's what this has become. So instead of looking at each item on the menu and asking specific questions about it, which became quite mundane and frustrating when I would go out to eat and made the experience not so fun, instead I asked this question and I get a grab bag of answers um, from the server and sometimes the chef will come out and I've had anything from grilled shrimp, um, different shish kebabs, steak, you could do a, a bean dish, all kinds of different options have been made available to me. And literally from places like Chili's type uh, chain restaurants to really high-end restaurants and everything in between, people have always been able to um, find something that I can eat with asking that one question. If they have extra virgin olive oil, I'll ask them to saute a side of vegetables and extra virgin olive oil for me, or I'll ask for a baked potato and I'll put extra virgin olive oil and sea salt on top of that. Um, you can, often restaurants will have baked DMs, so you could ask for that as well, or a side salad with extra virgin olive oil and a wedge of lemon. So that's a really simple way to go out to eat um, that works often for lunch and dinner. And for breakfast, I just um, will order eggs, scrambled eggs. I'll ask them to cook it with no oil. And I will make sure they're real whole eggs because you would be shocked at how many restaurants actually give you fake eggs when you order scrambled eggs. Um, and then I'll ask for some vegetables and an avocado and a side of fruit. So super, super simple, delicious. You can go out to eat, enjoying the company and the experience while still eating, staying satisfied, filling up, and feeling good. That is my trick for going out to eat. Now, if you are caught in a place where maybe there literally is no restaurant, like all there is is a McDonald's or Wendy's, um, and you just cannot figure out a way to eat clean, then there's always the grocery store options. And most grocery stores these days carry rotisserie chickens. So if you buy a plain rotisserie chicken, not the seasoned ones, because if you read the ingredients, the seasoned rotisserie chickens often have sugar and canola oil on the seasoning. So if you just get a plain rotisserie chicken, go get your favorite fruit, some bananas, some berries, peach, apple, whatever it may be. Um, and you could go, a lot of grocery stores now carry uh, non-GMO popcorn made with avocado oil or coconut oil. So if you can find a popcorn with avocado oil or coconut oil, then you've got some nice carbohydrates. Um, you can get the rotisserie chicken for your protein, some fruits, maybe some baby carrots or for veggies, um, and even an avocado to put on top of your um, on top of your chicken is a delicious flavor, and you're getting really healthy carbs, fats, and proteins that way. So keeping things super simple is hands down the easiest way to make anti-inflammatory eating a reality. If you're just having a busy day, or maybe I have some clients whose kitchen is being renovated and the rotisserie chicken with fruit and avocado is like their go-to, it's super easy. 
So those are a couple tricks to get you started um, when you're on the road or just in a position where you want to go out to eat and you're not sure how to maintain anti-inflammatory eating while you're while you're doing so. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is when you go out to eat often, having a glass of wine or a cocktail is kind of embedded into that scenario. And what I find is while the wine or the cocktail can taste good, often for people, it's less about the alcohol and more about having some sort of special like experience with that drink. And so if you order in a wine glass or in a cocktail glass, sparkling water, not soda, but sparkling water with a slice of lime, maybe even a tiny little dash of cranberry juice, um, and you have it in a cocktail glass, then it feels nice, right? You feel like if everyone else is having a cocktail, there's this odd sense of belonging that I think we all feel. You're not just drinking a boring glass of water with a straw. You're having like a fun cocktail special type drink, only it's a mocktail. Um, and it will not give you the inflammatory um, inflammation and the inflammatory symptoms. So that's a great swap when you're going out to eat. Next video series, we are going to talk about really um, how to travel on both plane, if you're traveling via air or on a road trip. Um, really getting down to some of the nitty gritties of different foods that you can pack. Really, I'm just going to walk you through what I do because I always pack my own food. Um, and if you don't pack your own food, how you can navigate that in the airports um, as well as on the road. Um, and then we'll also address some ideas for hotels and different situations that can help you be successful in terms of finding um, lodging, possibly with a kitchen or kitchenette which is what my family always does now. Um, and then the last video series that will be sent to you is really going to be about um, two parts. Number one, a lot of food swap ideas, right? So things that you can buy at the grocery store, um, recipes, just lots of ideas in terms of clean food that's packable, that's easy to grab when you're on vacation or traveling. Um, and then also like what to do if you do fall off the wagon and how to get back on. So I really look forward to this three-part series, and thank you for showing up. If you have any questions, always feel free to email me at Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, at JennyCarHealth.com. And in the meantime, we will see you at video series two. Thank you. Bye-bye.